good evening and welcome to Blackhawk TV. Have a middle border conference battle between the Amory Warriors and the Baltimore Blackhawks. Kick off about 7 o'clock, about 25 minutes or so. The coin toss just took place. Amory won the toss, deferred, and will be kicking left to right on your dial in the first half. So the Hawks will start with the ball and uh, feed is up. The audio is going to be off now for a little bit. We'll be back with the national anthem and uh, maybe a little bit pregame before that. So stay tuned and we will be back for some middle border conference football in just a little bit.
All right, we have uh, about five and a half game, five and a half minutes left of pregame before we get into middle border conference battle between the Amory Warriors and the Baldwinville Blackhawks. This is Blackhawk TV on a Friday night in Amory, Wisconsin. Thanks for joining us tonight. Got Zach Ambrose on the camera. Charlie Bignell doing some stats to the left of me. Blackhawks will receive the opening kickoff and be going right to left on your screen to start the game. So uh, the Hawks coming off a big win over the St. Croix Central Panthers last week on homecoming. Um, was their first conference win after losing their first four. To automatically qualify for the playoffs, you need a, a 500 record or better. And so the uh, the fourth loss of the season would seemingly eliminate the Hawks from playoff contention. However, after doing some math, realizing that there's not going to be 224 teams with a with a 500 or record, fi excuse me, 500 or better record, um, there's going to be some tiebreaker procedures that come into play. And if the Hawks can take care of business both this week and next week, they would finish the season with a three and four record and would be one of many teams hopeful of, of being uh, in the playoff field. So um, work left to be done for the Hawks starting tonight against Amory. And then next week we will host Somerset to conclude the season. And then uh, if you're interested how the playoffs work, they will determine the field on Friday night, next Friday night, and announce all the um, divisions so basically, 224 teams qualify. They break them down into groups of 32, seven groups of 32, Division One, Division Two, all the way down to D7. And then um, they generate four groups of eight uh, regions in, in each in each division, and then they seed them. And that's going to be computer seeding. So really, there's a lot of we don't know how it's all going to work. Um, but at this point, thinking that we were eliminated has it's kind of subsided. In fact, um, with sports, which has a big hand in a lot, a lot of how these things happen, um, went through and projected the last two weeks of the season and posted their uh, projected playoff fields with us in it, as well as St. Croix Central. Um, and I think that's, that's uh, probably important from the perspective of we would be seeded against St. Croix Central and would probably be um, a better seed if, if we were both to make it in three and four. And um, that would potentially avoid a second match with Ellsworth in the first round. So um, again, we're putting the cart way before the horse, even talking about it. There's business to take care of today against Amory. Got a bunch of parents realizing that we're sitting not too far behind them. I'm standing behind uh, two planes of glass, though, so nobody's going to throw anything at me. Should be a good night for football. It's a little humid. But as far as you know, temperature that we're getting in week eight... Uh, lots of people in short sleeves, coaches in short sleeves and, and comfortable shorts. We have a decent crowd here. Um, your camera angle that you're going to get is going to be a little bit lower. Um, the press box here is actually really spacious and nice. Um, Amory is above us, and then we're, we're below. So you'll have the coaches, the uh, cameramen, and then us over on the, on the one side. So... Um, should be a fun night. I think we're going to be having a uh, national anthem here soon. So as soon as that happens, we will turn our mics over to the national anthem. We'll be with you for opening kickoff.
We welcome you to tonight's game. It is senior night here at the Amory High School. The school district of Amory and the Middle Army Conference invite you to or remind you this evening that we require good sportsmanship at education-based sporting events. Attendance at interscholastic activities is a privilege with the expectation to exhibit positive and respectful behavior. For the enjoyment and respect of all in attendance, your cooperation in demonstrating the high ideals of sportsmanship is expected and greatly appreciated. At this time, we ask all those who are able to rise to please rise, remove your hats, and face the south end zone as we play our national anthem by the Avery High School Pep Band under the direction of Mrs. Rhodes Lundgren. Uh, starting lineups here, I would assume. Looks like the Hawks will be announced as a team. Led by senior running back linebacker Keegan Opsty. Amory also comes out as a team. Um, their quarterback, number seven, Kale Hopke, is a, a big senior, also a state champ wrestler. Uh, and their running back, number 28, sophomore, Coy Hopke, is uh, also a state champ wrestler. So um, we're going to see a heavy dose of Hopkeys tonight. Leading receivers, number four, Gavin Melberg. And if you recall last year, Amory threw the ball quite a bit um, and looked really good. I, I don't think they've had quite the success through the air that they had last year. Uh, and then, of course, we had our success throwing it through the air last week as well. So um, you might be in for a treat with lots of balls flying through the air tonight. Um, of course, incomplete passes and, and first down stop the clock. So uh, passing games typically tend to take a little bit longer than running games. We'll see how it goes. We have Amory kicking off. Like I mentioned, clocks will go right to left. Kicking off for Amory's number 80, J.C. Wentz. He's a senior. Deep back for the Hawks, Sam Hush. And I think that's Ryan Biedendahl. It's going to be Biedendahl at about the 13. He's got a hole. So good return by the sophomore. We're going to start this first series all the way out at the 41. 
Good starting spot. Mason Werner is the quarterback. He is uh, by the center. And the handoffs to Ofsty. Good run on first down. Big hole to run through. Looks like he gained about seven. This is eight, actually. So we're in a pretty much a big open area here in the press box with the coaches just down the way. So the Oh, over here, or what? If you overhear anything in the headphones, that's that's our coaches. Hand off to Hush on a sweep. Good block by Keys. Who actually blocked two dudes, and Hush is going to make it through. That's going to be a uh, good gain, almost over 20 yards. Looks like they're going to place it at the 28. So gain a 23 for Hush on that first down play. Or excuse me, second down play. Osti got out, reached the 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 corner. Got out, reached the the corner. The corner just kind of turned away, so he pushed him aside, and then went on to, to block the next guy, which really was able to, which allowed Hush just to, to get out to the edge and turn it upfield. So first down for the Hawks here. It's Keegan again. He's going to gain eight on the play. So I can already tell you the uh, the ball on scoreboard number is not going to be always accurate. This is Hush again. Good block by Osti. It's going to be another first down run. Inside the 10. It's going to be a gain of 11. So four rushes into the game, and the Hawks have moved the ball 50 yards and nine yards to go. Hush again. It's going to be a Werner keep. He's going to make the first guy miss. He's going to follow his blockers all the way down to the one. Is he in? No single signal yet, so we're going to call him short. And now we're at the one. So Hawks have gone 8, 23, 8, 11, and 8. Most they can go on this one is 1. And it's going to be Werner. And he is not going to do it. He's not going to get there. It's no loss, but no gain on the play. So good, good push there by the interior line of Amory. On the line for the Hawks, Clay Lorenz, 54. Isaac Grass, 63. No Sar are 50. No Sar, excuse me, 55. It's going to be a toss to Ryan Wienendahl, and Ryan is in from one. So at the 8.25 mark, at the 8.25 mark of quarter one, touchdown. By Ryan Wienendahl on a one-yard run. We have Davis Paulson in to take the point after. Davis um, arrived late in warm-ups because there was a soccer game going on at, at King Field. Shows up with a warm leg and the kick is through. So that's a 7-0 lead for the Hawks. 
want to thank all of our sponsors here at Blackhawk TV, Firehelm Langer, Timmerman Realty, St. Croix Garage Door, CW Garage Door Distribution, Nielsen's Foods, Flight Ship Ford, A-Star, Precision Excavating Enterprises, Precision Truck Service, American Family Insurance, Justin Nygaard Agency, Wisconsin Credit Union, Strikers Lanes and Sports Bar, Schaefer Financial Services, Blackhawk Garage Door, Anytime Fitness, The Forge Chiropractic, Pete's Constructions, Baldwin Lightstream, Auto Appeal, O'Connell Funeral Homes, Fenner & Jewelers, First Bank of Baldwin, Charlotte Heimer with Affleck Insurance, Christ Orthodontics, TMS Auto, and Village Pharmacy. Thank you, sponsors. Also want to send our condolences to the Fennern family um, who lost Nancy Fennern uh, earlier this week. So condolences to the Fennern family and all of their family and friends. Get to see Amory's uh, first possession here. Paulson back to kick. It's a squib kick. Oh, one that's going to be hard to handle, but Amory's going to pick it up, and that's Coy Hopke. And he is a tough kid and a tough kid to break down, bring down. And he's going to get all the way almost to midfield before he's pushed out of bounds at the what appears to be about the 47. Koi Hopke listed in the program at 6'2", 215. Older brother Kale listed at 6'2", 205. As I mentioned before, both state champ wrestlers. You're going to start in the uh, gun, backs on both sides, and left-handed hop, he looks to throw, and he misses his target. Sam Hush was the closest uh, closest player out there to that, to that pass, but over his head and falls incomplete. It's going to bring up second and ten on the Amy 47. Like I say every week, you are more than welcome to turn the volume down for those disappointed that Jake's not here. Hey, me too. Couldn't make it. Not offended if you don't want to listen. That's fine. Game will stay on. Zach Ambrose is a great cameraman. So Hopkins going to keep on that one. He's going to get tackled in the backfield by Keegan Oste. Good trigger. Way to take him down. For a tackle for loss, it's going to be a, a loss of a yard. It's going to bring up third and 11. Good rush there. Hopkins going to let it fly and it's going to overshoot his receiver. Kale Hopke is a big lefty with a strong arm. Yep. He's being uh, recognized by our coaching staff and he just kind of flicks it there off his back foot and the ball lands 40 yards down the field. So Ryan Bindals. Standing back on the 30. Amory is short to do, but he's got to come inside the numbers. He's got to come inside the numbers. That should be a legal. Uh, that should be illegal from the perspective of you have to enter legally and you have to come inside the numbers, and that player never did. Coach Keeper's pointed out. Amory realized they had 10, so they brought a guy off the sideline and into the field of play. Football rules prohibit you from enter from participating in play if you never came inside the numbers. So um, I'm assuming that's what this penalty is. It's like an illegal participation. And they're going to 
make them re-kick it. The official name for that is substitution infraction. If you could hear our coaching staff, they're yelling, call timeout, call timeout, call timeout from the perspective of if we have a gunner that's uncovered, um, if their punter recognizes that, he just calls a name typically, some sort of audible that says, I'm going to catch that, I'm going to catch a snap, and I'm going to throw it out to you, and you're going to get a first down. So no gunner here for the for the Warriors. We're going to come after it. Oh, just short. Vienendahl catches and tackled immediately at the 30. He should learn how to call a fair catch. You say the XFL, buddy. You couldn't call fair catches in the XFL. But the result of the penalty going from the, uh, I think the ball was down at either the, the 10 or the 15 on the, the previous play. Um, and now get first and 10 on the 29. So a penalty that really helped out the the Blackhawks. Possession number two here. 71 yards from the goal line. Werner in the gun. Another hand to Hush. And he's going to get, oh, he was one. One block away. That was Young Hopke that made a tackle. I think we're going to bring it back, though, with a backside hold. Other linemen that we have in the game, number 75, Big Tyler Hare. Number 58, Elijah Heimer. I mentioned 63, Isaac Grass. Other players we'll see offensively, number three, Colin Fritz. We've mentioned Sam Hush. We've seen Ryan Vindal carry the ball 22. Chase Schaefer's in the game. Eli Kuna, number 45, will play some tight end. That's going to be a counter to Keegan. And he's going to gain positive yards, but not a lot. Looks like he made it up to about the 22-yard line. Maybe the 23. So a four-yard gain. It's going to bring up second and 16. White Larson, number 15, is also going to get some time at receiver. It's hush in motion, and it's going to be a fake, and we're going to go deep. And he's got Wyatt. Wyatt adjusts. Oh, just off his hands. Wyatt looked over his inside shoulder. Mason threw it over his outside shoulder. He made a good adjustment. Just couldn't pull it down. see us going back to that play. We're spreading it out here. Gavin Sells joined the uh, joined the party. He's on the top slot. Werner under pressure. He's going to throw it across his body to Gavin Sell. And he's going to cross midfield, run real hard. And he's going to gain 31 in the Amory territory. Whenever you throw across your body, you're potentially playing with fire, but it worked out. And we are at the 46 with a fresh set of downs. Just under six minutes left in the first quarter. Ryan Dudendahl in motion, high snap. He's going to get it. That's could have been a block in the back, but didn't get called, which means it wasn't. Seven-yard gain by Ryan Vienendahl. I do like to point out the uh, the difficulty of officiating in any sport. Oh, there wasn't a legal block. It's 
going to negate the uh, the gain of seven. It's it's hard, and I mentioned this last week too. It's hard to make that block in the perimeter because you don't know what direction your running back is going to choose. So you might think, I'm going to block this guy out, I'm going to block this guy out, and all of a sudden the running back comes in, and your your kick out turns into a hold, or I'm going to block this guy in, and then your guy turns out, and you, you, you know the jersey pulls, and that's an easy flight to throw. So it's going to be first and ten. No, more than that on the uh, Blackhawk 47. It's going to be a draw. Keegan makes it the first level, and he's got, he's got green. Oh, he shakes free of that one and puts a shoulder down. He's going to make it to the 20-yard line. That's a gain of 33. That was a real good run by Keegan Oste. It's going to be a gain of 32 as they put the ball on the, third, on the 21. The, uh, the success of the draw, if you guys recall, way back in 2008 when we used to run that to Jesse Rose, who's now, the, I believe, the game supervisor today here at Amory. Jesse coached, talked to him before the game a little bit for seven years here. That is going to be a penalty on the defense. defense. Let's bring up first and five at the 16. Good offensive showing so far from the Hawks. That, that play before it was whistled dead was uh, Mason throwing a wide receiver screen to Colin Fritz. It doesn't look like we're going to see that again. We're going to see a little counter action to Keegan. He's going to get inside the 15, but just a gain of two. He's now at five carries, 54 yards. Next week on Blackhawk TV, we will have the final regular season volleyball game between the Blackhawks and the Prescott Cardinals on Tuesday night. Werner into the end zone. He's got Wyatt, and Wyatt's got it, and feet down, touchdown. Great catch, great throw. So, um, you know, five weeks ago we had the uh, – the opposite happened. We had Wyatt to Mason. This time we go Mason to Wyatt. Back of the end zone. Gets his feet down. So at 434, quarter number one. We get a Werner to Larson. 14-yard score. And Paulson's kick is good. To extend the lead to 14 to 0. Precision Excavating Enterprises is a full service excavating, grading, and trucking contractor located in Baldwin, offering all types of residential and commercial earth moving, septic systems, demolition, landscaping, driveways, and building sites. Our trucking division offers dump truck, grain hopper, and flatbed hauling services, sand, gravel fill delivery, serving the Baldwin and surrounding western Wisconsin areas. Give us a call at 715 760. 0768 for free estimates. CW Garage Door is your go-to source for the wholesale distribution of high-quality residential and commercial garage doors and their related parts and options. For over 15 years, we have provided exceptional customer service through our personal hands-on approach. Our flexible schedule ensures we will work with you to provide a quick turnaround and prompt delivery. For more information on CW Garage Door distribution, please contact us at 877-684-5125. So good start by the Blackhawks. Amory uh, in their first series, 0 for 2 in the air, one one quarterback uh, 
run that didn't get back to line of scrimmage. And Davis is going to boot it on the ground again. That's going to go to the other return guy. That's Cruz Juhas, a sophomore. And he is not going to get to the 30. Well, probably about the 30. A little bit past the 30. So the Amory Warriors will start their second drive at the 32-yard line. The scoreboard says 33. We can call it that. Spread out here. Only one back in the backfield. Looks like a pistol formation. It's going to be Koi Hopke, and he's going to get free and just bounce off people. Good tackle by Werner, but that's going to move the uh, move the sticks. Gain of 13. I, th I thought this kid was a uh, Physically impressive as a as a ninth grader, and he's only gotten better. We're gonna get it again. Nope, quarterback. Going to be a gain of seven. Let's bring up second and four from the Blackhawk 47. Amory's in Blackhawk territory. Going to be Coy. Better job tackling the ball there. Of course, it helps when you get to bring a Bring a guy down with your buddies. Gain a two. It's going to be Kalen. He's going to throw the ball. And I think that's going to be good for a first down. Yep. I think they said number six on the catch there. An interesting uh, play from the perspective that it's a screen, but they look to be blocking that downfield a little bit. something that we'll see on film that our coaches will let the officials know about. Kale Hopke, he's not going to get back to the line. We're going to get another tackle for loss there. It's going to be another loss of one. Young Hop, he's gonna break through again. He's just he's a he's a load. So on second eleven, he's gonna gain fifteen. Uh, Fourteen. The board says thirty-two. I think that's Got to be closer to the 31. And this is, oh, Kale Hopke going to miss his target. Trying to get number four, Gavin Melberg, senior involved.
McCoy Hopkins going to drop back. He's going to throw it deep down the sideline to Melberg, who adjusts but can't bring it down. It almost looked like he may have lost that one in the lights. Expected the ball to be somewhere it wasn't, and then when he finally saw it, wasn't able to get to it. Of course, with uh, Coach Ambrose's work on the camera, you don't miss any of that. It's like watching watching football on Saturday or Sunday. Oh, and I have no idea what was happening because I was too busy complimenting Coach Ambrose. Okay, so a hold. I'm gonna cross that incompletion right off the board. And we're replaying second down. And the hold must have taken place well beyond the line of scrimmage. Now I can uncross that incompletion off. And so we are at, we gotta get to the, Amory's trying to get to the 21 right now, they're at the 48. So third and 27. I mean, if I was, if I was calling the plays here, I would feel good about throwing it deep with a quarterback that has a great arm. I also wouldn't hate getting the ball in uh, Koi Hockey's hands as he comes in motion to pass. We're going to get a little roll. That's not going to work. That's a sack by Big Eli Coonan. And that's going to go down as a loss of eight. In high school, that uh, counts in the rushing total, not the passing total. It's going to go down as a rushing loss of eight yards. And we are going to get another punt. Ryan Bidendell back deep again, standing around this 25-yard line. Good pressure here from the Hawks. Ooh, just missed it. We're getting a scatter call, scatter call. I don't think that touched Sam Hush, but it did. According to uh, according to the officials, the way that Sam reacted by trying to cover it and maybe skimmed his back, it's hard to tell from our angle, but the officials who had a much better view get that call. It's a hard position to be in. You're running down, you're trying to do your job, and then you hear the scatter call. You don't know if the ball's inside of you or outside of you. And that gives Amory a little bit of new life here with 18 seconds left in the quarter. Opti's going to disconnect and run right behind it. He's going to get positive yards. It's going to bring us to the end of the first quarter here, but first he'll spot it. Just outside the 20, it appears. So again, a three. And as we switch quarters, it's a great time to uh, remind you to contact Don Timmerman of Timmerman Realty for all your realty needs. You can reach him by phone at 715-684-9541 or by email at dontimmerman at baldwin-telecom.net. Also, if you don't feel great about your dart game and you're looking to uh, improve uh, your morale a little bit, challenge Don to a game of darts. He's not very good. Don, I hope you're listening. I will accept your challenge whenever you would like. Firehelm Langer is a CPA firm with offices in Baldwin, Ellsworth, River Falls, and Lake Elmo. At Firehelm Langer, our clients are a top priority. We offer the skills and expertise of a large CPA firm combined with the personal attention and responsiveness of a smaller firm. When you partner with us, we take the time to get to know you, understand your goals, and build a lasting professional relationship. We invite you to turn to us at Firehelm Langer for bookkeeping services, payroll services, financial projections, tax preparation, tax planning, and all of your accounting and tax needs. The philosophy at Wisconsin Credit Union is people helping people, a priority that empowers Wisconsin members and employees to become involved in a variety of worthwhile causes, including Children's Miracle Network campaigns, community food drives, and more. Kindness counts. Pass along your own random act of kindness today. 
Even though we don't know what life has in store for our homes or cars, we can still prepare. Introducing the damage doesn't have to be too damaging policy from American Family Insurance. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. For details, contact Agent Justin Nygaard. Call 715-684-2919 or stop by 775 Main Street in Baldwin today. Quarter number two is going to start with Amory on the ball in Woodville 21 at second and seven after the uh, turnover on the punt. Kale Hobke throws it quickly out to Melberg. He's going to gain five and four. That should make this third and three from the 17. I would give it to the young Hopke and just let him do his thing. He's going to do his thing for a first down. First down, 10 to go, 14 yard line. Hopke's going to keep this one. He's a load. He's going to get inside the five. Maybe just to the five, gain a nine. They've ran the ball 10 times at this point, thrown it six. Usually pretty close to half and half. Of course, I think the uh, percentages probably skew as they get down at this point. The run game is still an option. Kilhoffy is going to run right into the end zone from from five yards out. We're at 10-12 of the second quarter. Amory has cut the Blackhawks' lead to half, 14-7. So the turnover proves costly for the Hawks. St. Croix Garage Doors provides Western Wisconsin with top quality garage door sales service and installation. We proudly serve Baldwin, Woodville, Hudson, Richmond, River Falls, Stillwater, Menominee, and surrounding areas. Give Brian a call today at 715-781-8989 for quote installer service. Nielsen's Foods has been serving communities since 1903. We offer full service caribou coffee, bakery, deli, and meat departments. We pride ourselves with our award-winning Nielsen's Market Meats and our friendly staff. Nielsen's vision is to build a strong family of customers and employees by delivering superior service to our customers, offering employee growth opportunities, reinvesting in our stores, and serving in our communities. Back deep for the Hawks, Ryan Vindendal and Sam Hush. Time for a statement drive here from the Hawks to push their lead back up to 14 after the unfortunate bounce on that punt. Ball's going to be kicked rather shallow and die at the 15. That's where Ryan Viendel's going to pick it up. He has a big hole, and he is going to get out to midfield. Another good return by the sophomore.
right at midfield. We're going to get the two-by-two two receiver set here to start this drive. Ten oh five left in the second quarter here. A game that's got a pretty good pace. Warner drops back. He's going deep, and he's got Hush, and just out of reach. I think the uh, the pass rush there was just enough to make Werner have to throw that ball a little quicker than he wanted and maybe didn't have the, uh, the ability to follow through on the throw like he would like and just missed Sam Hush by about a yard. Got trips into the boundary here. Okay, we're going to get a, get a timeout. Just aligned incorrectly. It's going to be the first time out by the uh, by the Hawks. Whether you're an experienced bowler or just want to hang out with your family and friends, come to Strikers Lanes and Sports Bar. We've been a staple in the community for over 40 years. Our lanes were recently upgraded and remodeled, giving our bowling alley a great modern look. In addition to our popular bowling lanes, we have a sports bar fully remodeled and separate from lanes and party area. A-Star Concrete Pumping is proud to be family owned and operated in Wisconsin. We pride ourselves on maintaining a high quality, unique fleet and very knowledgeable staff to complete all projects. From smaller residential projects to large scale commercial enterprises, A-Star Concrete Pumping has the equipment, staff and experience to handle all of your concrete needs. Contact them at 715-246-3920. It's neon night there in the student section. We're going to get second and ten. Looks like we're back in our two by two gun joker set. Being in dollar motion, he's going to. He it looked like Werner intended to give the ball to Vinadel. Vinadel thought Werner was going to keep the ball. The ball's on the ground. Werner fortunately was able to jump on it before. able to jump on it before the uh, the Warriors recognized the ball was on the ground. So third and 15 now for the Hawks. Looks like we're going to have to go in the air. It's going to be a sprint out. Offsey seals his guy and the ball goes in and out of the hands of Chase Schaefer. Which we're going to see the uh, See a punt here. So after a touchdown drive, a quick stop, a touchdown drive, and another quick stop, the turnover on the punt turns into seven points for Amory. They get a stop here. We're a guy short on our punt unit. And Amory's going to have an opportunity to put a drive together where they could tie or even take the lead. Davis Paulson with a okay punt. It's going to die right there at the 24, so a 29 yard punt from Davis. Flagship Ford is your source for new and used Ford cars, trucks, SUVs, parts, service and more in the Baldwin area. Our goal is to provide the best possible service to our customers and make sure your car buying experience is second to none. We are conveniently located at 850 Fern Drive, Baldwin, Wisconsin, 54002. So the success that Amory had um, was mostly on the ground in the last in the last series behind the legs of Coy Hopke, and he's going to take this one. Just hard to take down if you tackle them high. You try to tackle him at his at his shoulders, and he's just like, nah, you know what? 
I'm just gonna run through you. So gain a seven. No. Gain a two. going to be Kale and he's going to throw it. It's just one of those disconnects. I don't even know if it's a if it's RPO or if it's just a design pass play. Hopkins at this point 2 for 7 with 6 yards passing. Hasn't been able to connect on anybody down the field. I have to imagine that's something that we'll see attempted a little bit more is the game progresses. Another pass here. Hopkins going deep down the middle of the field. Mason Werner is not going to let that happen. He's going to pick that off at R47. Excuse me. At R47. He's still going. Mason Werner has been very, very good at free safety. And in addition to picking that one off, he's going to bring it back for 25 yards on the return. And the Hawks are going to get very good field position on this one. They're going to start at the Amory 28-yard line. Eight minutes and change left here in the second quarter. A tight bunch here. We're going to go to Hush. Hush is going to turn it upfield, make make a move. Gain a seven. I think we'll we'll see a heavy diet of that if. Emery fails to adjust more than they already have. I mean, we went from a 23-yard gain to an 11-yard gain to a 7-yard gain, but you'll take a 7-yard gain whenever you can get it. Probably see a pass out of here if I had to. Oh, no, counter. So Keegan is going to get the first down by gaining 6 yards. Even 10 yard per carry average for uh, the senior running back. Six carries for 60 yards. And the Hawks are quickly at the Amory 15 yard line. Play clock's run down here a little bit. This is Ryan Veen all to the edge. He's going to get inside the 10. Gain a 7. Let's gain a 7. So Werner up the middle and into the end zone from eight yards out. It's a good statement by the Hawks. And it's now 20 to seven. Paulson will look to push the lead back to the, the game high 14. That ball is up and no good. So 20 to 7. 
Precision Truck Service is a full-service heavy truck and trailer repair shop located in Baldwin and offering all types of general repair for heavy truck and trailer, diesel, mobile service, alignment, computer diagnostics, welding and fabrication, and sandblasting. As a Michelin heavy truck tire dealer, we offer best in pricing on Michelin, BFG, and Uniroyal tire brands, balancing and installation. Give us a call at 715-760-0768 or stop in. We are located conveniently on the north side of Baldwin underneath the water tower. So in the pregame, I mentioned a little bit about the uh, playoffs and how that works this year. Um, kind of felt like last week's, or prior to last week's loss, that things weren't looking promising. But um, as Travis Wilson of Wisp Sports put out last night, there's going to be a significant number of teams that are going to make the field with a, a conference record of less than 500. And, and if we can take care of business this week, and then take care of business next week, that we have just as good a shot as any to make it in at three and four. So uh, these games still have plenty of implication. A loss would, would certainly eliminate a team. Uh, nobody's getting in at two and five, uh, but three and four is a possibility. So we always have that to play for. If you, you as a fan had kind of decided, well, maybe you check out, that ball is gonna bounce off the up back and he is going to get it to the 40, maybe 41. Look like that was number 56, maybe Tyler Jackson. And the Warriors will start at the 40. Looks like Gavin Sell took him down there. Hopkins in the backfield. Kale hands it to Coy. And Coy does his thing. Gain a seven. Second and three, near midfield. Six minutes left in the in the quarter. Warriors will receive the second half kickoff. Another hockey run that's going to cross midfield. Gain of five. Warriors are moving the pace here a little bit. Ball's at the 48-yard line. Another handoff. And he just keeps his lower legs moving, or his legs moving, and stays low. Gains four. He's a load. I mean, if you can, if you can imagine him getting two years stronger and two years faster and two years better, he is going to be an absolute problem for people. The older hockey flips it out. No, it was, no, it it's going to be pass interference. So that's going to be a first down. Not automatic, but the mark off will give them the first down, I believe, at the 34 yard line. I'll tell you, it's, it's much more difficult, probably for you, just as it is for me, uh, but for you at home. Um, to see the the yard marks on the road at home, we're spoiled by seeing the bright white yard lines and always know where we are. Quarterback hop, he's going to keep it. He's going to gain positive yards after it didn't look super promising, but just a couple. 
means three. So at this point, both Hotkeys have carried the ball eight times each, totaling uh, 67 yards on 16 carries. So the younger Hotkey is eight for 50, the older Hotkey eight for 17. Two catches through the air, uh, so six yards total, 63 total yards as a team. The young Hopke makes one guy miss, and he is just going to zoom into the end zone. That's a 31-yard touchdown for Coy Hopke at 4.04, quarter number two. He's got, he's got size, speed, burst. Yeah, he just kind of hit behind the blocker and whoop. And that's going to be a kick good by Wentz to move the lead to only six points, 20 to 14. So as we've given some stat updates there for Amory, uh, for the Hawks, Mason Warner's done both all the passing. He's two for five, two completions, 45 yards total. Uh, Gavin Sell with a 31-yard catch. Wyatt Larson obviously with that 14-yard touchdown catch. Rushing, we've seen four of the Blackhawk ball carriers tonight, uh, led by Keegan Offsey with six carries for 60 yards. Uh, Sam Hush, three carries for 41 yards. Uh, next would be Ryan Biedendahl, two carries for eight yards, and then Mason Werner, four carries for five yards, which included his uh, fumble recovery. So in, in the name of turnover so far, each team's turned the ball over once. Baltimore's gotten one more stop. So we're going to receive the ball here with a six-point lead, four minutes left in half before half, uh, before Amory will start the second half with the ball. So a uh, big drive here. Try to push that lead back up. And we'll see what Coach Kiefer does to attack Amory. Squib kick again. It's going to be received at the 27 by Keegan Ofsty. Keegan does have some wheels, but didn't get to put them on display there. Gonna return that one to looks like the 43, where the Blackhawks will begin. What is likely, maybe not likely, but possible, the last possession of the half for them. Got a tight bunch here at the bottom. Timeout. Timeout, Amory. So it appears that that is. The first time out they've called. Looks like we've also only called one. It's a good opportunity for me to thank our uh, sponsors again. Firehelm Langer, Timmerman Realty, St. Croix Garage Doors, CW Garage Door Distribution, Nielsen's Foods, Flagship Ford, A-Star, Precision Excavating Enterprises, Precision Truck Service, American Family Insurance, Justin Nygaard Agency, Wisconsin Credit Union, Strikers Lanes and Sports Bar, Schaefer Financial Services, Blackhawk Garage Door, Anytime Fitness, The Forge Chiropractic, Pete's Construction, Baldwin Lightstream, Auto Appeal, O'Connell Funeral Homes, Fenner & Jewelers, First Bank of Baldwin, Charlotte Heimer with Affleck Insurance, Chris Dorr with Adonix, TMS Auto, and Village Pharmacy. Thank you to all of our sponsors. Again, doing this without them would not be a thing, so we appreciate all the help. Werner in the gun, hush in motion. It's going to be Werner in the keep. Maybe a gain of one on that play. 
Hush on the uh, on the sweep. He turns it up. He's in a cross midfield. It's going to be gain of seven, which is going to make it third and short. Hush four carries for 48 yards. So looking at third and two, and what I would anticipate is four down territory. We're going to run a play on third, and, and barring a, a significant loss or a penalty, we'll run another play on fourth if we don't get it. Which sometimes opens up the playbook and gives you a chance to throw the ball, but either a play late to come in or long to call, and because the play clock is winding down, we got our second used timeout of the half. Reminder again that we'll have Blackhawk Volleyball on Tuesday. We host the Prescott Cardinals and we will have Blackhawk Football next Friday when we host the Somerset Spartans. Uh, beyond that, we will, to my knowledge, host any home volleyball playoff games um, right here on Blackhawk TV. We'll go on the road or um, I would anticipate going on the road for any Blackhawk football playoff games. So um, we'll bring you that season, these seasons in their entirety. I don't believe we'll go on the road for, for volleyball just because going into a gym where you can't connect to, to other teams' Wi-Fi's makes it really hard to, to broadcast. So we'll have home volleyball Tuesday, home football Friday, and then anything else that happens after that in our gym. Hush in motion. Warner's going to keep. He's going to get a first down. He's going to run into the back of Big Hair. Enough for the first down, though. It's going to be a gain of six. Ball's at the 43-yard line. And as I mentioned, any uh, any football games in the playoffs, we would we would plan on hosting or plan on broadcasting those as well. Just be a matter of working that out with the other school because those are WI playoff events and those are licensed special. So we're going to get Fritz on a wide receiver screen and the number of reds was more than the number of whites. It's going to be a gain of three. We're in our two-minute offense, and Werner's going deep. He is going deep to Colin Fritz. Colin adjusts. There's a flag. That's going to be 15. High school is not spot fouls. It's, it's 15. So it's going to be a first and 10 at the 25. did some uh, asking of questions after the after the last week's um, personal foul after the play um, actually it was members of this crew and was told very very specifically that was not enforced correctly under no circumstance should it be first and 25 under that circumstance, it should never be first to 25. We'll talk more about that later. We got a draw here. Now she's going to be met in the backfield. It's going to be a loss. They're going to blow the play dead. The ball did come out, but the, the play was blown dead. Keegan is down. An obvious pain.
looks like he just kind of got rolled up on there a little bit. Doesn't look like he's going to put a whole lot of weight on that right leg as he walks off. We we'll hope that uh, hope that he's able to. Shake that one off. And with 128 left. With 128 left and 125 and counting in the half. It's going to be second and 12. We're just going to take a shot here. You got Hush, the sure-handed Sammy Hush. Up to the 15. Again, a 12. We got a swing pass out to Ryan Vienal. It's going to fall incomplete which isn't the worst thing. It's going to get a stoppage of the clock. Although it is now fourth down. Got one timeout yet left. If the first down happens without scoring a touchdown, the clock will stop as they reset the chains. So I think this is a, this is a run it, call two plays in the huddle, run it, and then as soon as we're ready to play, we'll play again. Clock really shouldn't be that much of, a, of an issue here at this point in time with the timeout left and being this close to the end zone. So got to get the first down first, and we're going to throw the ball into the end zone. Sam Hush is just not going to be able to get to it. And that is going to be a turnover on downs. That gives the ball back to Amory with 42 seconds left and two touchdowns with a running back who's been pretty dynamic here for the for the Warriors. 
See if Hopke's going to start airing the ball a little bit. This first one's going to be the little brother. And what's he going to do? He's going to cause a problem. He's going to keep running, and he's going to use his strength. He's going to go from the 15 across the 40. And that's a gain of 28, which puts him at 109 for the game. Clock stops, out of bounds, first down, 40, 34 seconds left at their own 43-yard line. Now the corners start to think, i got to be there to make that tackle, and opens up the uh, for the empty set here. There's going to be a throw. Hockey to his brother again. Scoots out of bounds. And he's going to gain looks like nine. So I wouldn't be shocked here if we we see him going to the top of the screen, going deep here, second and short. We're going to go deep to the, oh, we're going to go to the younger brother here again. He's going to go from the 47 to the 40, 41, it's going to a six. So 24 seconds left, two timeouts for the Amory Warriors. 41 yards to go. Empty set here again. Quarterback draw wouldn't be a total surprise, but he's going to throw it. Looking for his brother. There's no way you throw a flag on that. Hopke, four for 11 right now. 21 yards passing, one interception. It's a touchdown, but that came on the ground. Koi Hockey hands it to, excuse me, Kale Hockey hands it to Koi Hockey. He goes from the 41 inside the 25. We're going to call a timeout. So the ball was thrown, <laughs> dropped. They're going to place it at the 26, which I don't think is the right place. Koi Hockey, 11 carries, 124 yards, and a touchdown. After not allowing a single double-digit run to the St. Croix Central Panthers last night, Koi Hockey has five of them already tonight. The Hawks did uh, take the opening kickoff. Amory won the toss, deferred their choice in the second half. So regardless of how this series plays out here in the next 13 seconds, Amory will start the second half with the ball and a chance to either you know, tie, tie the game if they don't do it here, or a chance to take the lead or extend the lead depending on how, how this series all plays out. So 20 to 14, 13.4 seconds left in the second quarter. Amory's ball first and 10 at the 26. Both teams with one timeout left. Here we go. Hopke to Hopke. He's going to get tackled by Gavin Sell. Well done. And that's going to force them to use their last timeout. He gained five on that. But now that your your playbooks be becomes more limited, any anything that's caught in the middle of the field, even if the clock stops on a first down, it's going to be hard to get up there and, and either run a player or get a um, a spike ball. 
that's not something you see a ton at, in high school just because it's hard to get everybody both set and in a legal formation. Uh, but having the ball at the at the 21 yard line, your 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 quarterback is a very able arm that they could throw a number of passes into the end zone. They could probably get you could get probably two plays into the end zone if they if they want to go that route. Um, and I don't know, you know, what Amory has. They they've obviously converted both their extra points, so maybe they consider uh, kicking a field goal. They need the 16 for a first down. They need the end zone for a touchdown. Eight seconds left. One timeout. Hopke looking at the wheel route, and he's going to overshoot. They're going to get a, get uh, Jackson Johansson on a on a on a flag. They're probably going to call a hold. Maybe pi. Either way. Either way, it, it's they're going to get a shot in the end zone from probably the, the ten and a half, and it's going to be the last play of the half, barring a penalty. So, um, PIs in, in high school are not as as deadly being the the non-spot fall. It looks like they're kicking a field goal. So uh, senior J.C. Wentz is going to line up Just and attempt what appears to be about a 28-yard field goal. He's a lefty. Snap is good. Hold is good. Kick is up and curls through. And at the end of the first half, J.C. Wentz. Good from 28, and it's 20 to 17. After the Hawks jumped out to a 14 to nothing lead in the first uh, you know, seven and a half minutes of the game, it's been a 17-6 uh, answer by Amory. So uh, we're going to go to halftime here. Thanks for for joining us in that crazy first half. Uh, we will be back after halftime uh, to see how this one concludes. Thanks again for joining us. Be back soon.
All right, welcome back. Second half is about to get underway here in Amory, Wisconsin. Baldwinville Blackhawks at Amory Warriors. 20 to 17 at halftime. We'll give you a little stat update here. Uh, first, we'll do the home Amory Warriors. Uh, leading rusher, Coy Hopke, 12 carries, 129 yards and a touchdown. Kale Hopke, 8 carries, 17 yards and a touchdown. Passing, Kale Hopke's done all the passing. He's completed 4 of 11 for 21 yards um, and an interception. Leading receiver is Coy Hopke, two catches for 15 yards. Uh, Gavin Melberg, one catch for four yards. And Carter Wallen, one catch for two yards. For the Hawks, leading rusher is Keegan Ofsty, seven carries for 57 yards. Keegan did leave in the second quarter. Um, and I do not believe we'll see him in the second half, but you never know. Um, Sam Hush, four carries, 48 yards. Mason Warner, six carries, 12 yards. And Ryan Wienendahl, two carries for eight yards. Uh, Ryan Wienendahl with a rushing touchdown. Mason Warner with a rushing touchdown. The passing, we've had all the passing. <coughs> Excuse me. All the passing done by Mason Warner. He is um, four for nine. Uh, he's completed pass to four different receivers. Gavin Sell, one catch, 31 yards. Uh, Wyatt Larson, one catch, 14 yards, which is a touchdown. Sam Hush, one catch for 12 yards. And Colin Fritz, one catch for three yards. Um, scoring 8.25 of the first half. Ryan Wienendahl, one yard out. Davis Paulson kick 7-0. At 4.34 of the first quarter, Warner to Larson. Paulson kick 14 yards out, 14-0 score. Um, to start the second half, Kale Hoppy with a five-yard run. J.C. Wentz kick uh, to make it 14-7. 6.42, Mason Werner, eight-yard run. Davis Paulson missed the kick, 20-7. At 4.04, 31-yard run by Coy Hoppy. Wentz kick good to make it 20-14. And then right as time expired in the second quarter, J.C. Wentz 28-yard field goal to make it 20-17. And that's where we will begin the second half. Davis Paulson will be teeing up for the Hawks, kicking right to left on your screen. And Amory will, for the first time tonight, well, I guess it kind of did earlier, but for the first time tonight, have an opportunity to take the lead. We've seen a steady diet of the Hopke brothers. Senior Kale Hopke, left-handed quarterback and sophomore Coy Hopke, the uh, talented running back. So we're going to try to kick this one away from Hopke, deep right. Davis does just as he was asked to do. They're going to just say, you know what, we're going to give it to Hopke, and we're going to let him do it. He's going to do his thing, but be tackled before getting to the 30-yard line where Amory will start the first drive of the second half. Be first and 10 at about the 28-yard line. He's in the backfield. <coughs> it's quite hot. He's going to take the first carry. And he's going to get across the 30 from the 28 to the 33. It's going to be a gain of five ish. And we got a hawk down. Can't tell who that is, but we will identify and let you know. Gavin Sell, that's what I thought. 83, freshman. He 
He's up. Walking off on his own power. A little bit of a limp. Guessing, I mean, I'm guessing, but the way that he's coming off the field, he maybe took a shot somewhere that didn't feel great. It's going to take him a few minutes, and he's going to be as good as new. Okay, we got Kale Hockey. He's gonna, it's an RP, this is an RPL. And he's going down. Good pursuit by Eli Coonan. It's gonna be a loss of one. So that was legitimate RPO. He had the option to pass or to run. I don't know who he was really keying off of, but the uh, the pursuit was enough to get him down before he could get back to the line or make a pass. So third and six. Hopke drops back. He's going to throw the wheel route. Under throw it, and Jackson Johansson just misses the ball there. It's a little bit behind him. His feet slipped. But a good, good stop there by the Hawks to force a punt. And that's a great... Great way to start the second half. Big play on second down. Good cover on third down. Now we just got to do our job on the punt return. A little rugby style punt that we're going to scatter from. It's going to take a roll, but it's going to be down about the 32 yard line where the Hawks will take over after a quick possession by Amory. Got to feel good about starting half defensively the way that they did. Uh, Ryan Bienendahl. So from the 32 to the 38 or 39, 38, gain of six. Going to see more of Ryan now that Keegan is not available. Keegan's still on the bench over there, not really moving much, so I don't think out is the official determination because we wouldn't make one, but that's where I would classify him. So we can see, oh, a little broken play. That's going to turn into a pass. We've got illegal men downfield. So it looked like, uh, it looked like what we were trying to do is run a play. The play wasn't there. Mason scrambles, throws it downfield. We have an illegal man downfield. So we're going to mark this one off. And what would have been a third and seven or eight is now going to be a second down and seven or eight. So not a terrible move there by by Werner. Fake toss. Werner's going to throw the wheel. Oh, Colton Hush just couldn't reel it in. Or is that Chase Schaefer? Chase Schaefer couldn't reel it in. It's going to bring up third and eight.
think I saw Colton Hush running that motion on the previous play. So third and eight, Amory's looking to make a big stop here to get the ball back. Got Schaefer in motion. Wyatt with a good catch. He's going to come up a little bit short. He's going to gain six. And we're going to have a fourth and two. And it'll be interesting to see what the call is here. I don't think we're punting. I do not think we're punting. Now, is this one of those, let's see if we can draw him off. Amory's been kind of jumpy. Amory's been kind of jumpy. You draw him off sides, you call time out. You like the idea of a, of a jet, but not out of this formation. We run the play. Ryan is not going to get back to the line of scrimmage. He ran that one into the boundary, away from the green. It's going to be a loss of two on that play. And Amory's going to take over in Baldwin-Woodville territory. Hopke takes this one. The 38, he's going to barrel inside the 30. Maybe right up to the 30 for an 8 yard gain. Second and 2. So that's a big play for the Hawks. The snap on second and two skidded on the ground about 13 yards where it was recovered by the quarterback. And now at the 44 yard line, we'll call it the 43, a loss of 14. So that goes on the uh, ledger of Kale Hopke. Now it's third and long, and we're going to see a probably a wheel route to the boundary. Going to back up the uh, Warriors five. Third and twenty-one in Amory territory now, or very close to, probably not quite Amory territory, looks like it's going to be set at about 48, between the 48 and the 49. Third and 20. Hockey drops. He throws it backwards to his brother, so we're going to mark that as a, as a rush. Very good tackle by Ryan Wiedendahl. And it's going to be a two-yard rush loss. So that's a tackle for loss for Ryan Wiedendahl. And fourth now and 22 right for midfield. Why would you fake on fourth and 22? That would be crazy. Up. Scatter, scatter, head up and get the heck away. <laughs> uh, you gotta love sharing the booth with the coaches. So 
but not a great punt. Fortuitous for the Hawks. Hawks take over 6-11 left in the third quarter. Twenty-nine yard line, first and ten. Werner in the gun. He's gonna throw a little hitch out to Colin Fritz. Colin's gonna get taken down at about the thirty-five. Six yard gain. Tackled inbound, so the clock continues to run. Second and four. Gavin Sell back in the game for the Hawks. He's in the slot to the top of the screen. Another hitch. I think that's Sam Hush, and that's a that's good for a first down. Be a five yard gain. So what we're setting up here is a hitch and goal. Which we ran last week. Complete the hitch and go last week because I think that, that might have been Sam's touchdown. Well, maybe we overshot Sam. That was the one that went out of bounds, but I think that's what what we'll set up eventually. So the play's going to come back. That's sophomore Colton Hush. So the penalties on the on the Hawks there on a hold. We're gonna march. We're gonna march that one off. Ten yards from the point of uh, the hold, which is uh, gonna be a negative 12 yard, and is now going to be first and 22. From the 28. So after a relatively clean first half, there was a couple, couple penalty flags, but flags now in this pos possession and the last possession that have made some really long drives, or long to go, goal to goals. Oh boy, there we go. Werner to Fritz. Fritz ain't going down. He's at the 25. That's a gain of 53. Oh, 47 officially. 47. Colin Fritz. It's his third catch of the game. He's got 56 yards after two short ones. We got a long one, and the Hawks are approaching the red zone with four minutes left. That looked like a false start to me. We got a hitch and the go. Go get it. Sure handed Sammy. Is he in? Put him up. That's a touchdown. 25 yards. That was a really difficult catch that Sam made look pretty easy. So at 350, a quarter number three. 25 yards. Werner to Hush. And Davis. <coughs> is not coming in. We're going to run a play. Try to push this lead up. Vienendahl on the, oh, on the counter, and he stopped. 
So 26 to 17, it's a nine point lead. The significance of that is it's two possessions. Convert it 11 points. Means you can't take the lead on a field goal and a, and a touchdown with a two point conversion. So at 350 of quarter number three, Hawks take a nine point lead is 26 17. Members of Wisconsin Credit Union can access account information and take care of most everyday banking needs via Wisconsin Online, the mobile app, and text banking. Immediate access to your Wisconsin accounts is also available 24 hours a day via touchstone phone. Contact Wisconsin Credit Union to learn more. St. Croix Garage Doors provides Western Wisconsin with top quality garage door sales, service, and installation. We proudly serve Baldwin, Woodville, Hudson, Richmond, River Falls, Stillwater, Menominee, and surrounding areas. Give Brian a call today at 715-781-8989 for a quote, install, or service. So a couple good throws there by Werner. First to Fritz into Hush. Spans 72 yards after the penalty. The Hawks look to be back in business. Just need to have a strong defensive series here. Paulson kicks it low. It's going to be taken by Amory, and Johansson's going to make that tackle right past the 35 of the 36. That was uh, Cruz Juhas, the sophomore. Ball's going to be placed. Looks like the 37-yard line. First and 10 for Amory. So with Keegan out, we've got uh, Gavin Sell playing the Mike linebacker position. And we've gone to three down linemen. Eli Kuna with a good play on... Coy Hopke. It's going to be a one-yard one gain. It's Hopke's 16th carry. Oh, reverse. Gavin Sell is going to get in pursuit, but it's going to be Schaefer, I think, on the. So Melberg's first carry of the game. It's not going to be a first down. Third and one, so a gain of eight for Melberg. He's going to keep it himself. It look, I'm standing pretty much down the line, and it looked like Hopke got the first. To me, yeah, they're going to give him the first. That was clearly a first. <laughs> I mean, I, I, love, I love the passion from the fans here, but... It wasn't terrible. That was uh, that was exactly where he was stopped. So, well done by the guys in stripes. Hopke again. Looks like he's probably gonna gain two on that one. So second and eight, 2.15 left. So 
So it turns out Amory's been playing with a deflated ball here. They're they're, they're going to check the going to check the PSI on that one. I'm just playing. That's not true at all. The uh, the laces were caked with grass. It appears. So we got a ball boy taking care of that. So second and eight. Pass. Oh yeah, Eli Coonan making problems for the other team. Yeah. His fourth sack. So that's a loss of eight on the play. He has been a menace in the Amory backfield. So Hopkins is going to drop back again. He's going to throw deep. And complete. So there's no uh, there's no contact rules in in high school. You're a you're a blocker until you're until the ball's in the air. So you can push that guy right out of bounds if he's running down the sideline. As long as the ball's not in the air, it's not interference. So good hold there by the uh, by the Blackhawks. Oh. So a better looking punt from Amory that's going to take a bounce in their favor. It's going to be down at about the 20 where the Hawks will take over. Nielsen's Foods has been serving communities since 1903. We offer full service caribou coffee, bakery, deli, and meat departments. We pride ourselves with our award winning Nielsen's Market Meats and our friendly staff. Nielsen's vision is to build a strong family of customers and employees by delivering superior service to our customers, offering employee growth opportunities, reinvesting in our stores, and serving in our communities. Whether you're an experienced bowler or just want to hang out with your family and friends, come to Strikers Lanes and Sports Bar. We've been a staple in the community for over 40 years. Our lanes were recently upgraded and remodeled, giving our bowling alley a great modern look. In addition to our popular bowling lanes, we have a sports bar fully remodeled and separate from our lanes and party area. That's going to be a penalty on Amory. You can't come into the neutral zone. No, 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 no. <laughs> that, that's interesting. I mean, the guy on the, guy on the uh, Emory side immediately showed offsides on the defense. But anyway, first down to 15 from the 16. Mason's just going to get it back on this play. Oh, behind Hush. Receiver zigged when the quarterback expected a zag. Second and 15, 52 seconds left here. Quarter number three, Hawks up by nine. He's offsides again, no? Huh? All right, this is when Mason does his thing. Oh boy. Ball's out, and it is recovered by the Warriors. So, Mason Werner getting out of the pocket, trying to make something happen. Ball goes on the ground, recovered eventually by Amory where they'll take over first and 10 
inside the Blackhawk 20. Hopke to Hopke. It's going to take him one play to get inside the five. That puts Koi Hopke over 150 yards on the evening. At the four-yard line, first and goal to go. Koi Hopke again. He's not going to make it. It's going to be the quarter, so we're going to take a long walk. A long walk. Firehelm Langer is a CPA firm with offices in Baldwin, Ellsworth, River Falls, and Lake Elmo. At Firehelm Langer, our clients are a top priority. We offer the skills and expertise of a large CPA firm combined with the personal attention and responsiveness of a smaller firm. When you partner with us, we take the time to get to know you, understand your goals, and build a lasting professional relationship. We invite you to turn to us at Firehelm Langer for bookkeeping services, payroll services, financial projections, tax preparation, tax planning, and all of your accounting and tax needs. So that was a gain of one. A-Star Concrete Pumping is proud to be family owned and operated in Wisconsin. We pride ourselves on maintaining a high quality, unique fleet and very knowledgeable staff to complete all projects. From smaller residential projects to large scale commercial enterprises, A-Star Concrete Pumping has the equipment, staff, and experience to handle all of your concrete needs. Contact them at 715-246-3920. Precision Excavating Enterprises is a full service excavating, grading, and trucking contractor located in Baldwin offering all types of residential and commercial earth moving, septic systems, demolition, landscaping, driveways, and building sites. Our trucking division offers dump truck, grain hopper, and flatbed hauling services, sand gravel fill delivery, serving the Baldwin and surrounding western Wisconsin areas. Give us a call at 715-760-06, excuse me, 0768 for free estimates. Flagship Ford is your source for new and used Ford cars, trucks, SUV parts, service, and more in the Baldwin area. Our goal is to provide the best possible service for our customers and make sure your car buying experience is second to none. We are conveniently located at 850 Fern Drive, Baldwin, Wisconsin. Amory at the three to start the fourth quarter. Koi, Kale Hopke is going to keep it, and he is going to gain zero. Third and goal. Got two backs. He's going to get to the edge. And that is a touchdown by number four, Gavin Melberg. Three yards from the tailback position. They go for one here, and that puts him in a position to kick a field goal to win. So this conversion would make it 26 to 14 if Wentz can put it through, and he does. So 26-24. The Hawks will get the ball back. We've had seven touchdowns tonight and a field goal. CW Garage Door is your go-to source for the wholesale distribution of high-quality residential and commercial garage doors and their related parts and options. For over 15 years, we have provided exceptional customer service through our personal hands-on approach. Our flexible schedule ensures we will work with you to provide a quick turnaround and prompt delivery. 
For more information on CW Garage Door Distribution, please contact us at 877-684-5125. Amory's got some songs that they, uh, they're playing in between. Songs that I maybe haven't heard in a little bit, kind of forgot about. But I try to talk over because we don't want YouTube to uh, pick up on any copyrighted music. So here we go. Amory's going to kick off. It's going to be JC Wentz back deep. Vienendahl and Hush. It's a squib kick. Taken by Hush at about the 20. Spin move there, crossing the 40. So the last drive ended with a with a fumble loss. But the result was a short field for Amory, and a score. That's the second time tonight that that BW has turned the ball over and given Amory short field opportunity to score so um, can we answer here can we push that lead back up to two possessions we're a tight bunch hush on the sweep and he is not gonna get out but we have a face mask we do have a face mask so um, it's really too bad for Amory on that one but we'll take it personal foul face mask so how this is going to work it's going to be first down and I don't think we're going to move the chains so it's uh, 15 yards from the spot and a replay of the down so it's going to be first down and one which is properly assessed Gavin Sell on the jet we're going to get Ryan Vienendahl on the on the counter he's going to get two yards which is going to be good for a first down on first and one and we are we'll call it three yards And it is now first and ten in Amory territory, 48-yard line. Clock continues to roll here through the early stages of the fourth quarter. Schaefer in motion. Vienendahl again. He gets into the scrum. Whistle blows. Ball comes out. Just to gain a one. For Ryan. What we haven't seen tonight, as like we saw last night, was Mason getting outside the numbers and kind of using his creativity. This is Sam Hush. He's going to finish forward. So 47 to the 43. So four yard gain. Colton Hush. Did I say that? Oh, Colton Hush, the sophomore, the young sophomore. Younger brother of sure handed Sammy Hush. I'd, I'd go down to Wyatt at the top of the screen. Yeah, that's what I would do. Now, his momentum took him back. But he's going to fight forward. And that's a first down. Great job by Wyatt. Yeah, I feel like 
Wyatt being the former quarterback, he knows you got to get to the sticks. He came back a little too far, and he realized that he couldn't do that to his quarterback, so he fought through. Got the first down inside the Amory 40. Free safety cheating way over to the bottom of the screen. They're offsides again. The difference being that the flag came out that time. So first and five now. First and five, 33 yard line, eight, 13 and counting. Emory's done a great job keeping it close. BW's done a great job answering the bell every time that Emory's put a little roll on. That's Colin Fritz. Oh, it looked like it was deflected. Deflected and then off Colin's face mask. Can't tell if it was hand and then face mask or face mask and then hand. You're restricted by that end by that sideline. We've been doing a lot of our uh, passing into the boundary. Feel like they're bringing a blitz here. Counter. And the quarterback keep. Mason runs hard. It's going to be a first down. He had to get to the 28 from the 33, and he got to the 26. That's a seven-yard gain. Comes up a little ginger on that one. First and 10, 7.32 left. Clock is definitely our friend at this point. We're gonna throw it here on. Oh, we got a pump fake. I would. I don't know if you throw it or you. He throws it. It's deflected. Clock stops. <coughs> Contact Don Timmerman of Timmerman Realty for all your realty needs. You can reach him by phone at 715-684-9541 or by email at Don Timmerman at baldwin-telecom.net. So at this point we've thrown 19 passes, completed 10. 10 for 19, 155 yards throwing. So we're going to use one of those timeouts on, on uh, clock when the clock is stopped. Precision Truck Service is a full service heavy truck and trailer repair shop located in Baldwin and offering all types of general repair for heavy truck and trailer, diesel, mobile service, alignments, computer diagnostics, welding and fabrication, and sandblasting. As a Michelin heavy truck tire dealer, we offer best in pricing on Michelin, BFG, and Uniroyal tire brands, balancing and installation. Give us a call at 715-760-0768 or stop in. We are located conveniently on the north side of Baldwin under the water tower. Even though we don't know what life has in store for our homes or cars, we can still prepare. Introducing the damage doesn't have to be too damaging policy from American Family Insurance. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. For details, contact agent Justin Nygaard. Call 715-684-2919 or stop by 775 Main Street in Baldwin today. Speaking of Justin Nygaard and this song that they're playing is on Guitar Hero. The song that they're playing on the, the PA. 
Justin Agard of, of American Family Insurance was a very good Guitar Hero player back in the day, if you're into that sort of thing. All right, second and ten, Mason Werner with Larson in motion. He going to throw it. He going to throw it. He, yeah, he did it. Hush. Larson to hush. 26 yards for the score. All alone, Sam Hush. Davis Paulson point after looks like it's good. And we have extended the lead here 33 to 24 on Sam Hush's second touchdown catch of the half. Sure handed Sammy. Four catches, 68 yards, and two touchdowns. Wyatt Larson connecting with Hush on the touchdown catch. So Amory's gonna take over here, down nine, just like they did, uh, just like they did about eight minutes ago. They're gonna need two scores. At this point, the, the clock is, is a friend of the Blackhawks. But Amory has worked quick when when they've uh, broken off the big plays. So the Hawks will just have to, to prevent the big plays from happening here. And get the ball back and take care of it. We put the ball on the ground after the whistle a couple times. Put the ball on the, on the ground before the whistle a couple of times. So Hawks just have to take care of the ball when they get it back, get a stop here on defense, and then enjoy the ride home. But seven minutes, a lot of time. Paulson back to kick. He squibs it. Comes off the uh, up back at the 35. He is not going to get too far. He's going to cross the 40, maybe to the 45. The trade off there is that Coy Hopke does not get to touch the ball on the kickoff return. And Amory's going to have 55 yards to go to score, needing two scores. They have all three of their timeouts left. And they have a southpaw quarterback who can sling it. It's going to be a reverse, and it's going to be a double reverse, and it's going to be a pass. Oh, and it's caught! It's caught by the quarterback through Schaefer's hands. So that's going to be a gain of 13. So a double reverse pass. You can see it happening. It was developing. Koi Hopke on the run here. Missed tackle. He's going to get to the 34 from the 43. Gain of nine. Breaks 160 on the day. And they're in a hurry up. It's going to be Koi Hopke again. And he is tough to bring down. Yeah, he's not your regular sophomore. It's going to be a first down and a gain of 15 to the 19. Hopke in the gun, again to Coy, again running through arms. So the gain of three. 
I don't know what's more impressive to me, the the ability for him to run through arm tackles or the ability of a bunch of middle-aged men who obviously uh, never didn't tackle well in their prime, then they can point out how we're supposed to do it. It's a pass here. Kale Hopke into the end zone, tipped and picked! Chase Schaefer making a play. He tipped the ball and then he picked it off. Chase Schaefer with the tip and the pick. That's incredible. Incredible. I'm not sure what flag they want. What flag do they want? They want a pass interference? Now I'm trying to watch this new as a neutral party. I mean, I'm not neutral, but I'm trying to watch as a neutral party. Uh, they wanted a flag on the other guy. That's ridiculous. So being it all on the carry, he's going to gain just a couple. Two yards. That was a really good play by Chase Schaefer. I mean, there, there was some contact down almost outside of the screen. I don't know how you throw a flag on that, though. Got a toss. Nope. Underneath to Ryan. Doesn't look like he's going to get quite to the 10. It's going to be third and third and five. Okay, we're going to wait till the count. We're going to milk that clock. I don't know, I think that's a face man. I don't know if that's a horse collar. The side judge was right on that. Personal fall face mask. 15 yards, replay the down. We're going to snap it from the 20. First down. Henry's got a whole bunch of coaching s coaches with that go palms up and literally every time there's a, a flag or not a flag so we're actually going to snap this one from the 22 first and 10 they wind the clock So when the back judge puts his hand up, we get set. That means 10 seconds. Mason will start his cadence. With five seconds left in the play clock. Ryan Vienendahl with a little, uh, little jitterbug move right there. He's going to gain seven. It's been a really fun game tonight. Hembry did a great job. Just, I mean, they could have packed it in when it was 14 to nothing, and they didn't. Got it within two here early in the fourth quarter. I think that's Ryan, but he just was kind of enveloped by a sea of red. So no gain on that play.
Ryan's carried the ball 10 times tonight. Hasn't spawned a lot of real estate. 28 yards total. We're going to get a timeout by Amory. Just want to thank all of our sponsors tonight. Firehelm Langer, Timberman Realty, St. Croix Garage Doors, CW Garage Door Distribution, Nielsen's Foods, Flagship Ford, A-Star, Precision Excavating Enterprises, Precision Truck Service, American Family Insurance, Justin Nygaard Agency, Wisconsin Credit Union, Strikers Lanes and Sports Bar, Schaefer Financial Services, Black Hawk Garage Door, Anytime Fitness, The Forge Chiropractic, Pete's Construction, Baldwin Lightstream, Auto Appeal, O'Connell Funeral Homes, Fenner and Jewelers, First Bank of Baldwin, Charlotte Heimer with Affleck Insurance, Christo Orthodontics, TMS Auto, and Village Pharmacy. Thank you, sponsors, once again. So 126 seconds remain. Got some people checking the exits. Looks like our live stream viewership is going to stick this one out. Sam Hush on the toss. He's going to get the first down. Gain a five. Really good game from Sam Hush. That's his fifth carry, 53 yards. Four catches, 68 yards. Two touchdowns. His big first down. center. I'm not sure if we're going to kneel it when they have two timeouts left or not. I don't think so. Ryan Vindendahl again. Timeout Amory. Vindendahl with the carry. Tackled by Cook. Timeout Warriors. On 19 attempts, 10, uh, 10 completions, 155 yards, and uh, two touchdowns. Wyatt Larson just completed that one 26-yard uh, touchdown pass to Sam Hush. On the rushing slate, Keegan finished with seven carries for 57 yards. Sam Hush at this point, five for 50, 53. Mason Werner, 8 for 22. Ryan Vindendahl, 11 for 29. And Colton Hush, 1 for 4. Assuming we keep the ball out of Amory's hands, Kale Hopke, three carry, or excuse me, 21 carries for Amory, 180 total yards um, in what is likely to be a losing effort. But that 10th grader is, is different. in a not great way for the rest of the middle border. So Warner's gonna take the handoff. He's gonna hand it to Sam Hush on a little end around. He's gonna go back a yard. So six carries now, 52 yards for Sam Hush. If you're wondering if there's gonna be a, uh, a post game session tonight, that kind of depends on if they're going to head back, if the team head back, heads back to, to the high school, um, when they get back, when I get back, um, that sort of thing. So uh, if we do post it, it'll certainly be there for your consumption later tonight or tomorrow morning. If it's not there by the time you wake up and eagerly check your phones, um, then it didn't happen. So. Uh, we will see and determine the status of that yet tonight. Again, thank you for joining us. As I've said, we'll be watching these Blackhawks complete their regular season next Friday at home against Somerset. 
Um, also have Blackhawk Volleyball Tuesday night at home against Prescott. Third down, nine to go. High snap, it's gonna be Sam Hush. Sam's just gonna stay in bounds. But you know what? He got the first down, so it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter. That's a great run. A great run by the sure-handed Sammy Hush. 16 yards. Sammy Hush now with the 68-yard rushing and 68-yard receiving performance. 136 total. You know, they, the team votes on players of the games. If I had votes, Sam Hush on offense, Eli Coonan on defense. And I don't know who I'd vote on special teams. But I thought those two guys had standout games. You get one more kneel down, and that'll be all she wrote. So, uh, clock's going to tick down here on the night. Blackhawks going to be victorious with a 33-24 win. We're going to get a little Don't Stop Believing in the background. Thank you again for joining us on Blackhawk TV. I'm Jeremy Nygaard. Zach Ambrose on the camera. And awesome, as always. Charlie Bignell helping me hold some stats. Thanks again for joining us. Have a wonderful weekend, and we will see you next week. Have a good night, everybody.